take a look here at the 2015 micro exam, FRQ question number three. All right, so uh, this one sets up, they give us a graph here. Uh, the graph below shows the market for widgets, uh, how creative uh, the government is considering intervening in this market. So uh, this is a pretty straightforward uh, supply and demand graph. Uh, we have various prices, uh, quantities, uh, and then they're gonna essentially ask us about um, uh, a number of uh, policies that the government could uh, intervene in this market, uh, namely uh, price floors and price ceilings. Um, okay, so uh, let me get back to. Okay, so let's start with uh, part A. Um, calculate the total producer surplus uh, at the market equilibrium price and quantity. Uh, and, you know, pay attention. Uh, they want you to show your work. Okay, so uh, first off, it's good uh, just to, to note, um, try to draw a dotted line. Uh, but our, um, let's just put it up here, our Q star uh, is equal to 20. Uh, and then our P star, right, our equilibrium price is also $20. Um, so that's the market at equilibrium before the government intervenes in anything. Um, and uh, first off, uh, first question, part A, uh, calculate total producer surplus. Uh, at the market equilibrium price and quantity. So um, producer surplus uh, is gonna be uh, the area uh, of this triangle, right? Uh, so the area above the supply curve up to the price. Um, so we're gonna take all these people, right? All these companies are, are happy, right? They got this price way up here. They would have been willing to sell uh, for way down here, right? So they would have sold for, for $2, for example, but they got the market price of 20. Uh, so they've got a lot of uh, surplus, right? So it's essentially the area uh, of this uh, triangle, right? So I'm going to highlight it here and go here. So remember surplus, right? Uh, firms that were willing to sell it uh, down here, they were willing to sell it 10 firms for, uh, or 10 quantities at, at $10, uh, but they ended up getting the market price, right? So that area is all surplus. So uh, essentially we, we shade this, this entire uh, triangle here. Um, and that is uh, producer surplus. Uh, it would be uh, flip, right? The other way, uh, if you happen to be asking about consumer surplus, right, that would be sort of this area, uh, this huge triangle up here. It happens to go off the chart there, uh, demand, but it doesn't matter because they're not asking about that. Okay, so how do we calculate uh, uh, this number uh, for uh, producer surplus? Well, we need, you know, we have a triangle, right? So, you know, remember your, your formula, one half, uh, base times height. Okay, so we got to figure out um, uh, these sides, right? So we get this goes up to twenty dollars. So we've got uh, one half times twenty times, and then what is this? Well, we already figured out the quantity, right? The quantity is at twenty, so it happens to be twenty as well. Uh, so one half times twenty times twenty uh, is one half times uh, four hundred. Uh, so this ends up equaling. Uh, 200, right? So uh, let's put that down here. Uh, $200 for producer surplus. Uh, and, you know, make sure you show your work. That's all this uh, math up here. Okay. Um, now we're going to need to uh, erase some of this stuff. Okay. Uh, if the government imposes a price floor at $16, is there a shortage of surplus or neither? And explain. Okay. So uh, they give you a graph here. It might be good just to, to sketch it out. Maybe you can see this uh, pretty obviously initially, but I'm just going to sketch it out uh, just to be sure. Um, so let's just go ahead and draw it on the graph, right? Price floor at $16. So we've got 10, 12, 14, 16. All right. Okay. I'm going to write that. Price floor. Well, um, you should be able to see, right, that the actual price is above the price floor. Um, so this is a sort of a, a, a trick question in a way. Um, the answer here uh, should be neither. And why? Well, a price floor, right, the government is saying the price of the good, in this case widgets, cannot go below the floor, right? They don't want the price to go below uh, $16. Well, the price is already at $20 in equilibrium. So 
that's certainly not below uh, the price floor of 16, right? So essentially this price floor uh, has no effect on the market. Um, so there's, we're still in equilibrium. We're at the point up here. Uh, we're definitely already above the price floor. So the price floor doesn't even sort of come into play. Um, you know, it's, it's like saying, uh, uh, setting a price floor of, of $10,000 for a, a car uh, that sells for $20,000, right? It has essentially no effect on the market. Um, price floors have to be set to be effective above uh, the market equilibrium uh, and price ceilings need to be set below the market equilibrium. So this one, uh, if you don't catch that, um, it, but that's why I think it's good to, to draw it in there um, and some sort of explanation uh, what I just said, while well, the price floor is below the market equilibrium, uh, therefore it, it, it has no effect on the uh, price and quantity of the market as it is. All right, so now we're gonna, let's erase that. Okay, now we're gonna do a, a different policy. Uh, if instead the government imposes a price ceiling uh, at $12, is there a shortage surplus or neither? Explain. Um, so okay, same thing, same logic. Um, and now, instead of a price floor, we've got a price ceiling and we're below the market, right? So uh, now this one should have uh, an effect. Price ceiling uh, at $12. So you want to know, uh, is there a shortage surplus or neither? So you look uh, at that price. Let's go to our supply. So the market uh, firms are willing to supply a quantity of 12 at that price. Uh, how much is demanded? Go to the demand curve way over here, uh, 24, right? So uh, demand exceeds uh, supply. Sorry, we're down here now. Demand exceeds supply. Uh, and what does that mean? What, is that a surplus uh, or is that a shortage? Well, when demand, people demand more of, uh, and there's not enough to go around, uh, that is a shortage. Okay, so same thing. Uh, you know, shortage, uh, because at that price, uh, demand and seek supply, you can actually even say, you know, a quantity of 12 uh, is supplied, but a, a quantity of 24 is demanded at that price, right? Um, and you can uh, uh, get through that uh, explanation that way. Okay, um, I think I need to scroll down a little bit so we can see parts D and E. Uh, let's see, hopefully that'll work. Okay, uh, moving on to part D. Uh, if instead the government restricts the market output to 10 units, okay, uh, calculate the dead weight loss this time uh, and then show your work. Okay, so uh, we're gonna restrict the market uh, to this point here. Actually, you know what? We gotta go back because we're not gonna be able to see the whole graph. All right, uh, quantity of 10, okay? So the market cannot go beyond uh, this point. So the dead weight loss is gonna be this area of this triangle um, that is, is covered from, from this point uh, compared to where we were at initial uh, equilibrium, right? So you've got these three sort of points here. Um, you know, if you were uh, calculating like we did before, producer surplus uh, it would essentially be this small triangle down here, right? A consumer would be this uh, small one up here. Um, and this dead weight loss is represented by this uh, rather large triangle here. As you can imagine, it's rather disrupting to um, restrict the market to a quantity of only 10. Okay, so we've got that triangle um, and we need to find the area of that. Now I'm gonna draw, uh, let's use a different color, just because I think this is uh, uh, maybe easier if you think about this, split this up into to two triangles. Uh, now we're still, and then we're gonna add them both. Uh, so I'm gonna shade this one here, uh, just because the math um, is maybe a little more straightforward visually. Um, so we're gonna do, uh, again, one half base times height. So this red triangle here uh, goes from 10 to 20, right? So that's, uh, so let's do one half. Uh, so that side is 10, right? Let's look at this side here. 
uh, we've got a point of 20 and a point of 10. So that one happens to be uh, 10 as well. They made the math pretty easy for us. Um, and then we're going to add this other triangle. Uh, again, they share a side here. So this is uh, 10. And then we got to figure out uh, how much this side is, right? So we go from 40 uh, to 20. So that one's actually uh, 20. All right. So we've got um, so 10 times 10 is 100 times a half. So we've got uh, 50 for that uh, red triangle. Uh, and for the blue triangle, we've got uh, 200, right? 20 times 10 is 200 times a half uh, is 100. So we add those two triangles together. Um, oops. We get 150 uh, for uh, dead weight loss. Okay, so make sure you show your work there. Um, on that one. All right, now I'm going to scroll down again. Okay, now we're going to do price elasticity of demand. Okay, so equilibrium price changes from 20 to 12. Um, calculate the price elasticity of demand. Uh, make sure to show your work. And then the second part is asking about uh, elasticity. Um, okay, so let's do part one first. So um, if you don't remember the, the formula, right, that the, the price elasticity demand, we're comparing um, the percent change and the quantity demanded over uh, and relative to how sensitive uh, the percent change uh, in price uh, was, okay? So um, now we look, uh, uh, first off, we need to figure out um, how much is gonna be demanded. Um, so this is our demand curve here, right? Uh, so initially we figure this out, the quantity uh, uh, was 20. That was our initial, right? And percent change is always gonna be uh, uh, the new value, uh, divide, uh, subtract the old, and then divide by the old. Um, so let's figure out, so the, chain, the price we know changed to 12, so 12 is here. So we're gonna come all the way across, uh, find out how much is demanded at our new price. Well, okay, that's 24. Okay, so if we wanna calculate uh, the, the numerator here of this, uh, we gotta do this uh, 24, right? We take that value minus 20 all over uh, the original, right? So that's our numerator part of this uh, equation. Um, and then we gotta figure out the, the price change, right? Well, they gave us uh, the value here. So you take the uh, new price, 12 uh, minus the old, and divide that by the uh, original price. So, uh, this is a little uh, complicated. I'm gonna kind of simplify it over here. Uh, what you end up with is uh, four over 20 in the numerator, uh, negative eight over 20. Um, so if you, you solve this, right, uh, you end up with um, 0.2 over negative uh, 0.4, right? Uh, one fifth over uh, negative two fifths. Um, which equals negative 0 0.5 or negative one half. Okay, so that is our uh, the value of our price uh, elasticity of demand right here, uh, 0 point, uh, negative 0 0.5. Um, and again, be sure you show uh, what you did there, how you got that. Um, in this price range, is demand perfectly elastic, relatively elastic, unit elastic? Uh, so on and so forth. Well, uh, demand here is uh, inelastic because uh, this value is uh, less than zero, negative, right? So uh, since the uh, price elasticity of demand is uh, less than zero, um, we can tell, and you, if you look back at the uh, numbers here, right? Um, you had essentially a 20% change uh, in uh, the quantity demanded 
uh, versus a 40% change in price. A pretty drastic change in price, right? From uh, 20 down to 12. Um, so the uh, uh, quantity demand was not as sensitive as the, the, the price change uh, was. So uh, that leads to a, an answer of uh, inelastic, relatively inelastic.